Google said that they want to keep challenges, but they want to make sure that they don't cross a line. What exactly is a line to you? I think the line is good and bad. The line is in the middle of the good and the bad, and I think they want to keep the good, but they want to take out the bad because it's harming people and who wants to be harmed. YouTube is the world's most popular video player. Millions go to the platform every day to watch videos. Hi sisters, James Charles here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Evan 2 Bra. Go! Oh no, not to get started. There's a good chance if you're looking for it, you two might have a video about it. But earlier this year, YouTube made a bold move to ban a category of its most popular videos, challenges and pranks. YouTube clips that depict dangerous or emotionally distressing pranks have been banned from the platform. Not all challenges that go viral are dangerous. Some are silly and some are fun. We're gonna do a mannequin challenge. In 2015, a challenge emerged that brought thousands of people together under buckets of iced water. The Ice Bucket Challenge raised money for a disease called ALS and got millions of views that encouraged money for research. It started many months before. You just happen to have a hot summer mixed in with something that's very easy for anyone to do. It just was one of those really great things that connected on so many levels. Why do you think people have that drive to attempt a challenge like the Ice Bucket Challenge? Types of challenges have existed on playgrounds for years and years, but I think that social media gives a new platform for, for people to do things. There was so much positivity that came out of the Ice Bucket Challenge. Um, to give you some perspective on that, we typically, through donations, have about a $1.5 to $2 million research program a year for Canada, um, and this provided $11.5 million. It's an example of what sometimes um, social media and, and these types of things can actually be positive. YouTube challenges can be uplifting, like the Ice Bucket Challenge, but there are some challenges that are harmful and even sinister. YouTube is stepping up its efforts to make its services and its viewing safer for kids. This morning, YouTube saying enough is enough, announcing they'll ban all challenges that present an apparent risk of death. Callum is a student from my hometown, Hamilton, Ontario. Recently, he was introduced to the Momo Challenge. If you haven't heard of Momo before, I need to warn you. Some of the images you're about to see are creepy and can be really scary for some kids. This would be a good time to pause the video and grab an adult to screen this next section for you in advance. There's been a recent viral trend which has been scaring kids all over the world. You or someone close to you may have had the misfortune to encounter this charmless character online in recent days. Momo began life as an unlovable but otherwise blameless piece of art in a Japanese gallery. What seems to have been happening is roughly this. Word of mouth and news stories have prompted some to believe the Momo character pops up on children's phones and computers, encouraging them to take part in a so-called challenge, including self-harm but the evidence for this is sketchy, to say the least. Hi. Hey. So, uh, introduce yourself. Um, my name is Callum and I'm in grade four. I know that you have a story. Can you tell me your experience with the YouTube challenge? Well, I was just eating lunch and my friends got an iPad and they um, looked up Momo challenge. And the Momo character was saying, telling them to do these dangerous things that can harm themselves. Um, after I went home and I was talk, telling my parents, like, we need to look this up, like, I'm super scared. And I need to, so they looked it up and they figured out that um, it was dangerous and, like, that we shouldn't be doing it. Why do you think people really want to uh, do one of these challenges? Because they're like, oh my gosh, I have to do this. It's like this challenge, everyone's doing it. It's going viral, so I'm going to do it. I'm going to post it on everything and, like, extreme, it's gonna, right? It's really bad. Yeah, way too extreme. The world is a smaller place for children today. And so while I would do a double dare on something where four people would maybe see it, now there's that potential of that golden cup or that award of being going viral. 
Dr. Rebecca Riddell is a psychologist. CBC Kids News spoke with her to ask why a kid would be drawn to challenges like the Momo Challenge, and what a kid should do if he or she ever finds themselves involved in a dangerous challenge. Peer pressure can be very bullying, but it can also be very subtle. If someone asks you to do something, listen to that voice. If you have hesitation, there's a reason. I think it's important to talk to, to some an adult. Um, if you need a step before that, like there are teachers at school, trusted teachers that could kind of help. You may not be the only child that can come there. You can talk anonymously to resources like Kids Help Phone. Making sure you talk to someone, an adult who can help you is an important way forward. Rules have always existed about posting dangerous videos on YouTube. I am doing the Tide Pod Challenge. But now YouTube is getting serious about enforcing them. What are your thoughts? Has YouTube done the right thing to ban dangerous challenge videos? Get in touch with us and share your point of view at cbckidsnews.ca. For CBC Kids News, I'm Arjun Rao.